Imagine waking up and finding out the world was upside down. Maybe you live in New York City. You get in your car and drive north towards Florida. You turn around and start driving south towards Boston. What in the name of Einstein's ghost is going on here? In reality, the world isn't really upside down. The poles have just reversed their magnetic charge. But when this does happen, you may not be alive long enough to drive anywhere. Welcome back to Factnominal. Today, we're exploring what will happen when the Earth's poles flip. And it is a matter of when, not if. Let's start in Earth's core, the source of the magnetic field that wraps our planet and protects us from lethal solar and cosmic radiation. The inner core is a solid mass of crystallized liquid metal that in time managed to cool off and change from a liquid to a solid. However, the pressure at the center of the Earth is so high, more than 3.5 million times the pressure of the atmosphere at sea level, and so hot at temperatures that rival those of the Sun, that experiments reproducing how the core could have cooled under such intense pressure and heat have varied. A lot. Estimates of when the inner core formed range from 500 million years ago to 4 billion years ago, a massive margin of error. Knowing when Earth's inner core began cooling off matters a lot because the dynamics between Earth's inner core and outer core create what's known as a geodynamo, an Earth generator. This Earth generator is responsible for the magnetic field we know today. Contrary to popular belief, the inner core is so hot that the iron there is actually demagnetized. It's the interaction between the roiling molten metal of the outer core and the solid state of the inner that seems to drive the magnetic field around the Earth. And depending on when the inner core began cooling off, our understanding of how this generator functions can change dramatically. Fluctuations of heat and density deep in the core essentially run the generator. So figuring out the geochemistry of how it all began would be like solving the mystery of how life began. Earth's geodynamo is an incredible source of self-sustaining energy, forged out of a Goldilocks set of circumstances that few other planets exhibit. These circumstances involve a combination of rotational speed and temperature. Too little rotation like on Venus, where one day takes the equivalent of 116 Earth days, and no magnetic field is generated. Too much like what may have happened on Mars, and the whole thing could fizzle out and die. Another perplexing mystery about Earth's core is this. Part of it may be made from another planet. 4.5 billion years ago, our planet collided with another celestial body, Theia. During the creation of the solar system, Earth and Theia smashed together with such force that two things happened almost simultaneously. One chunk from the impact shot out and created our moon, and two chunks of Theia, each a million times larger than Mount Everest, plunged deep down into Earth's outer core. Theia's embedded ghosts may be the cause of all the magnetic anomalies we're experiencing now blockades that are affecting the continuity of Earth's magnetic fields. We've all seen the moon, but it turns out that these pieces lodged in the core of our planet may be creating catastrophe. It's hard to predict an effect if you don't fully understand the cause, and this is exactly what's going on right now with Earth's poles. Earth may be experiencing the beginning stages of a magnetic reversal, where the north and south poles flip places, but we're not quite sure why. We do know that there is a battle raging beneath our feet. Earth's dipole, that nice orderly system of north and south poles that resembles a bar magnet, is under attack from within. Swirling clusters of molten iron and nickel seem to be growing stronger in certain areas of the Earth's outer crust and draining energy from the poles. As a result, the North Pole has been wandering towards Siberia at a rate of 55 kilometers per year. In the south, something called the South Atlantic Anomaly is behaving in a similar way. This part of the magnetic field that stretches from the southern tip of Africa to South America is gradually weakening and expanding like a blob across the southern hemisphere, though at a slower rate than its northern counterpart. This area of weak magnetism is wreaking havoc with spacecraft. A weaker magnetic field means higher doses of radiation and many satellites moving through the anomaly in low Earth orbit have experienced technical failures as high radiation fries their electrical systems. Even more concerning is that the South Atlantic Anomaly looks like it's about to split into two blobs. 
Over just the past five years, an area of weakening in the east has been accumulating, and it looks like it's on the verge of separating. If it does, the magnetic field will become even more erratic. If these trends continue, we may well be in for a full-blown flipping of the poles, a catastrophe the scale of which humanity has never experienced before. Or maybe we have. It won't be the first time this has happened. By radiocarbon dating magnetized volcanic rocks, scientists have discovered that the poles have switched an astonishing 171 times in the past 71 million years. Throughout Earth's 4.5 billion year history, scientists estimate the poles shift on average every 300,000 years or so. The last permanent pole shift was 780,000 years ago. So, based on the math, it seems like we're due for a flip. But by analyzing fossilized tree rings, scientists think that Earth may have experienced a pole shift much more recently. Recently enough that modern Homo sapiens were around to experience it, just 42,000 years ago, a blip in Earth's history. The Earth's poles swapped places, but just temporarily. The last Shemp event, as it's been named, lasted for 1,000 years. For reasons unknown, the poles flipped, then 1,000 years later they flipped back to where they are now. The devastation left the Earth a tattered mess. Studying the fossil record to figure out what happened back then might give us an ominous idea of what the future may bring. During the last Shemp event, Earth's magnetic field nearly disappeared completely, weakening to just 6% of what it is today. This allowed damaging cosmic radiation, ultraviolet light and solar flares to enter the atmosphere, which created extreme weather conditions like lightning storms and super high temperatures. The event has been linked to mass extinctions across the globe. Around the same time as the pole flip, entire species of large mammals across Australia and Tasmania disappeared. In Europe, our cousins, the Neanderthals, died out. Our Homo sapien ancestors managed to survive, but it's uncertain just how close we came to the same grisly fate as the Neanderthals or the giant mammals in Australia. The weak magnetic field in the South Atlantic anomaly is already disrupting satellites. When the poles do flip, it will likely create chaos with the world's electrical grid. Without satellites, we can control electrical grids, which means blackouts that could last for decades. All of the tech we rely on now would be rendered effectively useless. No smartphones, no GPS systems. Military tech and sensitive cybersecurity would be compromised. No internet. The $2 trillion cryptocurrency market? Poof! Gone. The scope of the technological disruption is hard to fathom, and it would have wide-ranging geopolitical and social implications. Society would be thrown into chaos. Wars could erupt as defense systems fail. The fall of data could very well mean the fall of civilization as we know it. Yet, we will probably survive. The nature of the pole flip means that some areas will be worse hit than others. Cosmic radiation and solar flares won't blast the entire planet. They could kill everyone in London, or they could hit some remote part of the Pacific or Siberia. We just don't know. Scientists have figured out that nearly all plants and animals on Earth respond to the magnetic field in some way, kind of like a magnetic sixth sense. The phenomenon is called magnetoreception. If the poles flip, the magnetic field will disappear for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, before it builds back up again. When this happens, animal migration routes will be severely disrupted. Many species of whales, fish, turtles, and birds rely on the Earth's magnetism to help them navigate and figure out where to go to lay their eggs, or mate, or find food. Even the most basic organisms respond to magnetism. In 1970, a scientist named Richard Blakemore found that single-celled organisms in the mud of a pond were moving in an organized direction in response to the magnetic field. Scientists later discovered that this was because the cells contained tiny bars of magnetized iron oxide that interacted with Earth's magnetic field. We've only just begun scratching the surface of how magnetoreception actually works, but if the poles do flip soon and the magnetic field goes away, our already fragile ecosystem will be thrown into disarray. The domino effect this will create is hard to predict, but it certainly won't be very good.
The Earth's magnetic field is essential for life on our planet. We've hit you with some pretty heavy stuff so far, but it's important to know just how our magnetic world protector works. You can think of the Earth as a kind of massive bar magnet like the ones you've probably experimented with in grade school science class. The magnet is dipolar, meaning there are two poles, with a positive charge on one end and a negative charge on the other. So let's take our fastest runner in the class, all right, and let's have this particle moving by, all right. Well, let's let our fastest runner in the class catch up to the, to the particle. When you catch up to the particle and you're moving at exactly the same speed as it, you measure zero relative velocity and you measure zero magnetic field. So if you're moving fast enough relative to these particles, you can get yourself into a frame of reference where you don't even detect the magnetic field. Magnetism is everywhere. Tiny magnetic fields are created when electrons spin around inside atoms. But in most objects, the electrons just spin randomly and their magnetic forces cancel each other out. In a bar magnet, molecules are arranged so that the electrons all spin in the same direction, which creates the magnetic field that lets you stick a photo to your refrigerator. Inside the Earth, swirling currents of superheated molten iron and nickel in the outer core guide electrons along a path. These currents are hundreds of miles wide, flowing thousands of miles an hour through the 1,400-mile deep outer core, all riled up by the speed of Earth's rotation. These mammoth currents create a closed, continuous loop where electrons flow into the Earth at its magnetic north and out at its magnetic south in much the same way as a bar magnet. Simple, right? Except, based on everything we've mentioned earlier, it's a whole lot messier. The short answer to, should we be worried, is yes. But there are lots of things we can do to prepare for the inevitable polar flip. It is possible to design satellites capable of withstanding the extreme radiation that would come with a reversal of Earth's magnetic field. Governments, businesses, and communities can come together to create action plans and figure out how to store data and manage resources so that when the flip does happen, we'll be prepared. The question is, though, are we capable of collaborating on a global scale to prevent something that will have a global effect? Unfortunately, the answer to that is probably not. Maybe the best we can hope for is that local pockets of magnetically aware geophysicists figure out how to preserve the best of human culture, and we can rebuild as best we can in the aftermath, whenever that may be.